Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional bhakti lata teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostu Badas. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's getting that exciting time, that exciting time when people are starting to show up at the farm. Patrick Hefferman's here Oop, for Live Live. Mayor is here, and Radhe Radhe Rachel and her dog and Jeff just showed up. Wow. Oh. Getting exciting here. Kostuba is going to show up. I'm just going to wait by wait in the driveway. As soon as you get out of the car, tackle you. Hit you with a pillow. <laughs> Will you ever tire of that? <laughs> never. It never gets old. Okay. <laughs> vegan truckers coming. We pillow fight vegan trucker. How are you? What have you been doing with your life? I had a good day yesterday, Raghunath. It was one of those perfect new york summer days where i go to the beach it's absolutely lovely out there come back into the city jump on a bicycle ride on up to the uh the hari nam you know he's like Rangaru. living life this guy he's living oh it is right life. Then, I, then i do some hari nam you know i see all the other yeah i see such nice people such nice devotees there what do you see what Chin, do you see name names saw, you know i named Chin, you know chinmay radha yeah he's so nice. sweet and, he, that, there's there's a great example of a devotee right she just like just serves do? her family, you know, serves the devotees. She cooks, you know, she's a really expert cook, right? She's one of these Russians that have all these skills, you know. <laughs> Russians with skills, yeah. They got all yes. kind of skills, these people. They all got, they've got a lot of skills in Russia. They're very <laughs> they really cultured. Do. No, I'm there. It's a cultured culture. Yeah. So she she makes all kinds of like, she's got a really good Instagram thing too. I think it's called something like Cooking with Chinmayarat or something like that. Hmm. But, uh, she, she so she comes up to me as I'm about to leave the kirtan there, and she says, "Are you leaving right now?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Oh, hold, hold on. I have I have homemade bagels. You know, homemade you bagels." Yeah, and then she just like gave me a bagel. Makes you know, a which actually I really bagel. needed at that point. You know, that's next level stuff. Homemade bagels. But it just shows the way that she thinks. You know, it's just like well, l like I'm not only going to go to the kirtan, but like let me serve all the devotees there, and then she like personally like you know like provides for you. You know. It's just a wonderful, beautiful mood. Well, who else did you see? Who else did you then see? Then I went to the Bhakti Center. Yeah. And uh, it was Thursday night Kirtan, which is the first time that I've done it like full on in a long time. And it was really wonderful to do again. I was hanging out with the Keshwar there, old friend of Keshwar, Eric hmm. Casanova. <coughs> Excuse me. So Lady Di. Lady so Di. Aditi, our Indian correspondent of the past. Aditi. Ooh. Yeah. Lady Di says she's going to pop in on us this weekend. All righty. Aditi may pop in on us this oh, weekend. Just be great. beautiful Kirtan. It was all ladies leading Kirtan last night. Okay. Kulsi Rani led Kirtan. Achuta Gopi led Kirtan. This girl, last time, you know, Mayuri. You know, do you know that girl, Mayuri? Mayuri. She like, no. She was like, uh, she's like an Indian girl, but she used to come and lead Kirtan, the Bhakti Center, but she was like really young. Now she's a little bit old. She's probably like 14 or 15 now. But she used to come when she was like, you know, 10 and, and or something like that and be leading Kirtan. But she led apps, you know, and they just get better. She was great leading Kirtan then. She was on a whole nother level last night. So it was just a great time. Talking, to you, talking to you is like uh, reading the Chaitanya charge from Rita. It's like, and so then there was this person right? in the kirtan, and then this person yeah. showed up with bagels, and then this person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. So many beautiful people. It, it, you know, Bhakti, if you practice it well, it just brings out the best in you, you know? You know what's and, beautiful uh, about the Bhakti Center? We talk about, like, 
the problems with inclusivity and you know we bring everybody the bhakti brings everybody together it doesn't matter your race your, just, creed, your gender your gender yeah. preference you just come together and all that stuff is secondary you it's get all off secondary. the mental platform. It's just it's all, all in the mind. Garbage in the you mind. You're going to yeah. find peace trying to get everybody's mind to connect. You're not. You got to yeah. connect from the soul. And then everybody just comes and sings yeah. and throws exactly. their hands in the air. It's quite beautiful. You hit the nail on the head, Rogan. Everybody's just got to get off the mental. Everybody's on the We're, mental platform like crazy. I, I'm, it's I'm identifying as this. I'm identifying as that. And I'm, I'm favoring I'm this. I'm identifying as a soul. And you yeah, identify you as the soul. Get, get, you want to be happy? No matter what you identify as, you're only going to be happy as you identify as the soul. All my troubles start from me identifying myself as something temporary. Isn't that true? Right. It's true. You know, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I lost my wife left me. My kids are grown up. Blah, blah, blah. There, that's where the anxiety is, because in that identity, you lose things. You gain things and you lose things. In my mm. spiritual identity, I never owned anything. <laughs> that's it. We've solved the problems of life. <laughs> the mysteries of the universe have been the revealed. Mysteries of the universe. Okay, are we're gonna go now. <laughs> and it's only seven o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Do you have to figure everything out for us, Rogan? Oh man, <laughs> that was it. You just got to the bottom of it. Everybody, get off the mental platform. Get off Love the everybody. Go Identify right to the, the soul. soul. People. It's quite Let's simple. Just do kirtan together and forget all this nonsense. Yeah. Hug each other. <laughs> now, uh, I want to say me and Yogeshri Cindy Lunsford and Barshan Ali yeah. Bobby Marchand and you. Yeah. We are coming together in January for a Bhakti Cultural oh, yeah. Immersion 300 hour, boom, boom, boom. We do this every year for the last five or six years. If you're a yoga teacher um, and you wanna deepen your Bhakti twist on your yoga, you yeah. gotta show up, you gotta show up. We're spend it at the Govardhan Eco Village. Radhanath Swami's there practically a whole month just drifting in, giving us some classes, drifting out. He's in the periphery all day. And he's um, he is. He's just floating yeah. around doing his. Yeah, he floats around. He magic. comes. You're having lunch. He just floats on over to your he's table. Right. You're having lunch. He just hi. He just floats in, <laughs> floats away, like, no, like Narada. And um, you know they've got a great Ayurvedic treatment place. And we're just like in the, we're like in the bosom of Radha Swami's people taking care of us. It's it's <laughs> like they are feeding us, and it's a beautiful backdrop considered the cacophony that is India. Um, you go to this uh, Govardhan Eco Village, and it's just like peaceful and beautiful. Like the old Vrindavan. It's like, yeah, you feel like you're old, in the old Vrindavan. And so anyway, we go there, and we spend the almost almost a month there, and uh, that starts January 2nd. You know who's coming to that? Tell me. Henry. Henry Get is out. coming. He's surprising oh, us, but now I, bl I yeah. <laughs> now I blew a back. surprise. And Henry hasn't been to India in a long time. He's been in India many, many times, but he's just at one point he's like, I'm, uh, you know, I'm too old to go to India now. And now he's like, no, I'm going, I'm going. Awesome. That's why I like We're this looking man. Forward to that. Looking forward to that. So many, it's just, you know, you meet the devotees here. Oh, so, you meet the, you're happy, I gotta, right? This weekend. Yeah, I got to say, January, I got to, I got to direct them. I got to direct them. You can go to Raghunath.yoga. If more info on that, Raghunath.yoga. Why, why wouldn't that be on the, Anyway, I don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's on Raghunath that yoga. It might be on our website too. It's not. All right. Rachel just says in the background while she's eating breakfast. It's not. <laughs> um, but it probably will be. <laughs> Go to Raghunath that yoga for now, or you can uh, direct message Hot Cindy Yoga. Is it Hot Yoga Cindy? It's Hot Cindy Yoga. Yes. On Instagram. You're just sending people all over the place to sign up for this. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you there. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, uh, announcements? Oh, oh announcements. Yeah. <laughs> we have a back to recovery group meeting at 1 p.m. today. Tomorrow's our QA day. So if people have questions, they could email us at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. And there's still spaces available for the Italy retreat if you go to wisdomofthesages.com. Yeah. Okay. You take my children's spaces, but you have to be, you have to behave like my children. <laughs> <laughs> but oh by the way you know i got an announcement i just want to thank david murray who sent me what uh yeah he sent me a copy of his his uh mother's books you know illumination they're beautiful the, aren't they uh, 
and The Butter Thief. The Butter is Thief is a good one. Right. Those books are so beautiful. I mean, I've seen I've seen it for like, you know, for decades. I've, I've been aware of that book and I've seen the illustrations. But to have it, hold it in my hand, it's a huge book. And flip those pages. The beauty in those illustrations of Krishna, you know, it's it's verses from the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, his mom's like a pure beautiful. devotee. Kim Murray, she spent a lot of quality wow. time with Prabhupada. Man, I tell you, I feel, you know what I felt like when I was looking? You know, in one sense, it's kind of like children's art, but it's more than that. You know, it's like any person of any age can like enter into those paintings. They're so touching. And I was thinking, you know, if when I was a kid, because did you have a thing like that when you're a kid and you just like stare at something for a long time? I mean, you stared at fire, I think. <laughs> 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 But but like when I was a kid, I used to have like a, like an album cover and just sit there staring at it for like yeah. you know, and, and um, I was thinking if I, if when I was a kid, I was just staring at this book, and, and the verses that are in it, it would have been it would have changed cha my life. Could have changed your life. Yeah, it, de it's it very definitely would have changed my life. It definitely would have changed my life. Well, if you have children out there, you should check out that just uh, Amazon search uh, or David Murray you can put it up on the board. Illuminations, Illuminations in the Bhagavad Gita the and Bhagavad the Butter Gita. Thief. There's another one too. I can't think of it right now. Beautiful. Put it on the, put it on the board. So much for that Henry gift. knows too. Put it on the board, Henry. I got three of those sent to me too by Mr. Haridas Henry. Okay. Okay, let's get on with some nuggets. Serious nuggaroos. These are nuggets. They're similar to some of the ones that we've been doing earlier. I guess they're kind of a theme did develop, Roganath, and it had to do with sense control. The sense control theme. We call these the sense control nuggets. That's right. He who controls Hold the it. sense. Who's, who's this from? This is from Anaiki Tochaku Ezekiel. Okay. What kind of name is that? I was like, I thought they're Japanese. Oh, no, maybe it's Greek. Oh, no, I maybe it's African. What the heck? Yeah, I think that I honestly, I was trying to figure out who he is. And it, the best that I came, came up, up with, well, the best that I came up with, he, I got the impression he's like, african and that he writes books on okay like, leadership he's contemporary business. oh I, it's it, a it appeared that book. way it appeared that way okay but you know well I, I can't i can't vouch for him as a person but i liked his quote okay let's here's his quote he who controls the sensory stimulus can control the mind and he who can control the mind is in charge that almost sounds like mr spock or something like that <laughs> Like Mr. Spock. Right. No, funny. I remember Mr. Spock saying, the pain is within the mind. We can control the mind. Therefore, we can control the pain. I remember that. That was from Star Trek? Yeah. Like Spock was we, an intense We should pain have Spock and like, quotes. Oh, maybe we should do that. You're right. Wouldn't that be cool? Could be. Because Spock was sort of like a Gyani. Yeah. Yeah. That was the okay. thing. You could see. He, he was in... I, I, I wasn't really one of these Star Trek guys, but I remember seeing that. I never forgot that, that he's, he was saying that, that uh, he was like an in intense pain. And I, and maybe that Scottish guy was like, Scott, he was in the senses. That guy was living in the sense of Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and he couldn't Whoa. understand. How, he was he always in like a some type of panic. And he, and, he, and Spock annoyed him. Right. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> they were like you and me. <laughs> You're Spock and I'm Scotty. Yeah, no. Well, no, Spock doesn't get annoyed though, right? I'm Scotty. <laughs> you, but Spock. you annoy me more than I annoy you, I think. <laughs> okay, I this is from the but no, hey, well, we should let's let's read it, right? He he who controls the sensory stimuli. I need to I need to be aware of what's coming through my senses. I need to get it under control, right? Like I can't control it all, but I can control a lot of it. I can control what I watch on my television, my computer. I can control what music I listen to. I can control to a large degree what people I choose to associate with. You know, and mm -hmm. if I can control that, it's going to affect my mind. I can control the mind. And then I'm in charge, right? Instead right. of my senses being in charge and they're dragging me all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Take charge. Uh, we, the, the yogi, the serious yogi who wants to like actually transform themselves, they don't put themselves into dangerous situations. You know what I mean? They don't mm -hmm. go to places that are going to trigger them. They don't go to places that we, we each have some weakness. We each have some button that if you press, it's like you're putting us on a slippery slope. You know, so there's some people who are just addicted to gambling, addicted to drinking, addicted to 
pornography. It's not that's not a bad thing per se. It's when you put yourself in a situation where that will get triggered. You know, okay. if you might be you might be triggered by all those things. Just don't do any of those things. Don't, you know, don't hang out at bars. Don't go to Atlantic City. You know, insulate don't, yourself in a way. Yeah, insulate yourself and protect yourself. If you find out what those trigger points are and just put a line in the sand. I don't do that. I don't go to those places. I don't go. And that, that's how I stay connected and protected. Otherwise, I'm living in the senses and the senses. Those things can be a. <laughs> A highway to hell. <laughs> Sing it, Kasuba. That's a little uh, ACDC for you today. <laughs> a highway to hell. Now that I think of it, that's a great song. I, ne- <laughs> okay. I never liked, I never so liked that song. I never liked that song. I never liked ACDC, but. Why do you like that theme? It's, yeah, a highway to hell. It's like, it's what He's I always say, it. slippery slope. Now I'm going to say it's a highway yeah. to hell. He's not trying to justify his behavior. He's like saying, I mean, he may be celebrating it, but in any case, <laughs> he's admitting it. Well, you were saying ACDC might be celebrating. You are or... so against ACDC. And... I was against them. Yeah. Uh, this is from Theoleptos. The- Theoleptos. I want, I want just one name. You've got Theolept- one. Madonna. Batman. The Leptos was a the Leptos. Uh, he was a I Byzantine monk. He was a monk. A Byzantine monk from Metropolitan Met, Metropolitan of Philadelphia. I think it was a different Philadelphia. <laughs> it wasn't the Philly that we all know. <laughs> it's not Philly down in uh, <laughs> South Street, Philly. Um, the Leptos Byzantine monks are they the uh, the ones who use a lot of the imagery and the icon icon iconography the, the, the well they're catholics i think all catholics do but i think right. the byzantine empire was like that eastern roman empire so like maybe around two Mara, why don't you wiki you that place. byzantine b-y-z-a okay to give free reign to the senses is to shackle the soul boom i just sort of said that in my own rugged enough way <laughs> okay. to give free reign to the senses is to shackle the soul to shackle the senses is to liberate it See what, I see what you're doing here, Kostuba. You're taking people from different thing. wisdom traditions and you're tying them together. And, and you're basically saying Kostuba's subtitle today is God is one. <laughs> no, I'm not saying God is one. I'm sort of saying God is one. <laughs> but but it's you? true. It is true. That, you're leading um, us towards your this is a body insights. That if something is true, then we should expect to be seeing it popping up in different cultures and different What ways. is truth, Kostuba? What is truth? You ever hear people say Get that? Out of here with is, that? What is truth? <laughs> Your truth? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. But but the, hey, you know, but this is good, right? To give free reign to the senses. Oh, I'm free. No, you're not. You're shackled, right? We have this crazy idea what freedom is. We think I'm free when I'm just doing whatever the senses are. Or, 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 that's not freedom. That's, that's not freedom. The souls become now the soul's prisoner. Right. You can be free in prison, my friend. If you learn how to work this book, Bhagavad Gita correctly, you can be free in prison. Right. That's very that powerful. Sells, I don't know if that sells the book very well. <laughs> I you think so. Free in prison. I don't free want to in be prison. prison. And then to shackle the senses, right? Get control of them. Just like they're wild horses. You got to get them under control. Then you're liberated. Then you can direct where you want to go. That's the Bhagavad horses Gita. are in shackles then. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay this is from oh i like this name samuel, samuel smiles. smiles i think maybe he I, I need a name like that he may be the, riddle he may be the person that uh that um coined the phrase self-help he had a book called self-help someone coined that phrase interesting someone had to self-help you're right someone coined every phrase i guess yeah the ignorant man passes through the world dead to all pleasures. Save those, the, save those of the senses. Read that again, because I think you're you know, coming a little in and out. The ignorant man passes through the word world dead to all pleasures. Save those of the senses. You see, now, I like the way he phrased that. You get it? I don't Morgan? get it. No, He's saying, no. when we think of pleasure, generally we think of the pleasure of the senses. And if we think of some kind of pleasure beyond the senses, that's almost like esoteric or hard to even. He's saying, hold it. No, 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 let's flip that, right? Let's flip it. He's saying the ignorant person, they pass through the world dead to all pleasures, except those for the senses. Like, like those are the insignificant ones, right? The, right. the pleasure of the senses is like 
okay, yeah, fine, but don't be dead to all the pleasure that lies with the spiritual pleasure, right? <laughs> right. And, 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 you know, and, and for the yogis, we consider even the mind to be one of the senses, the sixth sense, right? So in other words, there's a spiritual pleasure that's beyond that. The ignorant mm. person is dead to that. They're not picking up on that, right? Yeah. Like, like take, just what we're saying, Chinmay Radha, right? She comes to the Kirtan, you know, Union Square, right? It's a dirty place. There's lots she of She must have gave you a good bagel. It was a great bagel. A and great then you bagel. come up and you say, and she takes pleasure in here. It's not, it has nothing to do with her own sense enjoyment. She's deriving pleasure from serving others, right? And she's yeah. saying, here, to take this bagel. You know, she, that meant she spent the day, you know, like making these bagels and thinking about serving the devotees and, you know, and that's where she's deriving her pleasure. And you look at her, she's got a big smile on her face. She's happy. She's radiating, you know, spiritual, you know, uh, energy, you know, that don't be dead to that, right? Pick up on that kind of pleasure. You know, um, when you first go to India, we've drifted. There has been a service drift. Remember we were calling it, what was that? The vocabulary, the language drift. The drift yeah. What was that called? Um, there, there's been a service drift in our culture. And when you go to these places, in these holy places in India, and people are like, let me get you this. Let me get you this. And then they flower garland you. And they, do you need some more of this? You're like, what's going on here? Since when <laughs> am I so, so nice. important? I'm not used to this. <laughs> it really touches a person's heart in a deep way. I mean, service of anything touches the heart. But when it's service connected to Krishna, it totally transforms a person. When you offer a person prashad, totally transforms a person we were just talking about this oh hey we're getting we're getting um message on the message board here i tell you i almost laughed my butt off when he said <laughs> when, when, oh. matt, when matt got him wrote um uh sammy smile sounds like he's a it sounds like he's it a, sounds like a mob name here. Yeah. Okay, Sammy my name's uh, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy the Knife and uh, Sammy Smiles. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Smiles. Oh, okay, now he is going to laugh like crazy. Rogue Mouth will be back in a few it's minutes. Henry just went like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we lost him. He's gone. He's gone. But I'll say this, that what I am picking up here on, on the message board is that Ramadevi let us know that the Ratiatra has started in Puri, right? The Ratiatra. Oh. And I think oh. you can tune in. Maybe someone can find where, give us a link for that. There's a place this online. This is such a special time in history. We're not taking this seriously enough. For thousands of years, Ratiatra went on and you could never, like, you know, if you didn't go there, you're, now you can watch it on YouTube. You go you have watch to it walk for months live. to go to it, right? Huh? In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it talks about how people came from West Bengal, right? Like, you know, like miles north of Calcutta. They would walk every year. I don't know how like, people I'm... had jobs in the old days. <laughs> they would just go. I mean, first you got to walk to Puri, then you got to walk back. And it's like, a, it's like a many day festival. Yeah. But they would do it, right? They would walk to celebrate to celebrate that. They would walk for oh my God, weeks. They're putting the links on the board right now. This is incredible. Watch it online. I'm ready after, to get off the show today, right man. now. Maybe we should stop the show and just watch Rathiatra. <laughs> stop the show. <laughs> you know what? I'm <laughs> actually getting really focused on Rathiatra lately, too. In the inner meaning of it? You mean? The inner I'm meaning. Getting focused I can't on share it with you. I don't think you're ready. What do you mean? You're like you're reading about it? You're yeah. Well, when I say reading, I mean listening to lectures. Oh, okay. But yes. Okay, yeah. let's get on with life. What do you say? Well, that was good. Sense control day. Okay, but that was... I like that Samuel smile, so... Tim Smiles. <laughs> Yo, it's Tim Smiles. He's a friend of ours. <laughs> All right. Okay. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojayam Madirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. To Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta prayeshu badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya, bhagavati uttama shloki bhakti rabhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. 
Om Agyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tazmaya Shri Gurubeda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to last minute squirrel. If you're listening on Zoom, put your Instagram handle on the board so people can follow each other and we can develop a, more of a virtual community. It's a real community. It's a real community. People are yeah. become good friends. People are dating from our community. Yeah. They're dating. Yeah, it's been marrying. Some... Maybe splitting Has up. Has there been a marriage? No, there hasn't been a marriage, but we're working on it. Let's get a marriage. Let's get a marriage. Let's get a wisdom of sages marriage. David Charles Wilson, what are you waiting for? Come on. You can't push. <laughs> Do it right now. <laughs> Let's have a virtual marriage. A virtual arranged marriage. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Harry, we should have it. Okay. So where, are we? Mara, where, where are we, Mara? Come on. Do your job. I did. <laughs> or not. She's doing her job all the time, and you're like getting on a case. Reading from Canto 4, Chapter 22, Text 24. Text 24. Text 24. Oh, you already did your job. It's right there. It's silly old me. See? <laughs> okay. I can't. Who's speaking, Kostuba? Rewind me. Um, the, the four Kumars are speaking. Sanat Kumar, right? I think it is. And he's, he's laying it all right out. He's answering the question, you know, like, how do you achieve that highest goal in life? He's given a formula. You know, it has to do with practicing, you know, he, it had to do with transferring one's attachment from material to spiritual, right? Stop being attached. You let go of your attachments to the material things and transfer that attachment to Krishna. That's basically his formula. Now he's going to start to get into how one does that in, in, in some more detail. The yogic principles are going to come out. Some of them are going to be familiar to people that practice Ashtanga yoga. Love this. Let's go. I love this. Transfer your attachments to things that mm -hmm. bring you higher instead of degrade you. Mm -hmm. It's an attachment anyway. That's right. You're going to be attached one way or another. Yeah. yeah okay, here we go. Text 24. A candidate for spiritual advancement must be nonviolent. Okay, that's the first one, right? Ahimsa. Boom. Ahimsa. This is, like, this is a principle that runs through everything we do. We... There, there's going to be some violence just existing in this world, but we should minimize. minimize our violence. You know, there's a warrior class, of course. You know, you need to protect people, but it's got to be minimized. And it should be the fact that uh, they are yeah. conscious beings in this world that are outside of the human shell. We should note that, you know. It's true. You know, they say that... Um... The commentators on the Yoga Sutras, I forget which mm -hmm. one, maybe be, I'm not sure which one, but they say that like from the yamas of, of uh, that we find in the Yoga Sutras, it said that ahimsa is the, is the, the first one that all the others stem from. And they, they give an example like, like an elephant footprint can contain like the footprint of many other smaller animals. So like all these other yogic principles, they fit within ahimsa, right? Like, like brahmacharya right. fits within ahimsa. And let me, you know, huh? Let me ask you. Yeah. Ahimsa also pushes one towards vegetarianism or veganism, correct? But that's the way all of the, <laughs> the, the, all of those classical commentators on yoga sutras, they all go there. And it's uh, amazing and, and the, how and, yoga and the, teachers nowadays they they translate ahimsa to being stop hurting yourself. Well, yeah, right. Stop it, hurting it, yourself. It really, yeah. I mean, we, I, we don't want to hurt ourselves, sure, but that's generally <laughs> not the way. That, that's not the way. That, you know, the, the, the that's you don't start. The, you know, it's like it's it's prominent primary meaning has to do with how you treat others. Sure. And and, and so um, it's amazing how people just yoga teachers in the West they just jump right over that one. Yeah, some of them, not all of them. But not all, no, not all of them. Things are changing now. I think there's more depth in the yoga community. Okay, I think. But Prabhupada's is. also going to go there in the commentary. Maybe we can read some of that. But so the first one we have is this himsaya. When you know, and I'll say this: we're going to we're going to hear a list of um, practices here that one's meant to cultivate in this in this particular bhakti yoga practice. He's starting with the himsa, just like Patanjali starts. Patanjali, yeah. Will be the same. Um, but if you, again, if you want to boil them down to two principles, I yeah. think we can say 
I mean, too, like on the practical level, there's always on that spiritual level where there's like, once you've achieved the practical, you know, you attach yourself to Krishna, you know, that's the, the deeper value. But like on the practical level, um, kindness and simplicity, right? Kindness and simplicity. The yogi makes these two principles like prominent in their life. I'm kind, you know, himsa means I'm going to be kind to everyone. Rather than harm, I'm going to be kind to every living entity. I'm going to live simply. I'm not going to compete out there in the you know i'm not going to live a lifestyle which makes me you, th wherein i'm grabbing more of the resources that i need mm. right because then i'm going to complicate my life i'm going to and, and actually in a sense that's going to likely break this ahimsa principle you know when i'm taking more of the, there's enough for everyone but when, when we start to take more then no we need it's it. foundational it's, it's foundational fun. yeah these like two that. these two yeah so so let's let's continue the verse it started with ahimsa a candidate for spiritual advancement must be nonviolent, must right. follow the footsteps of great acharyas. That's okay, called Paramahamsya Charya, following in the footsteps of the great acharyas, the great teachers. You don't you make it up, right? You don't yeah, we're just... not just making up stuff. Oh, this is Raghunath's cool take on yoga. You know, I read this book and this is what I think about it. No, you don't do stuff uh, like that. Yeah. You follow in the footsteps <laughs> to the great acharyas. This stuff has been handed down for many, many centuries by great thinkers who are like not living in the ridiculous world that we're living in. They have clear minds <laughs> and it works, you know, and they're not works. trying to like posture themselves as great acharyas themselves yeah. either. Right. Yeah, this right. Is like, they they're they're following the commentaries it. of their gurus. When, yeah. Whenever we it, 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 it seems like whenever we like we're writing something or we want we're here to like you do the, in academia. They do this. I want to establish myself as this is what this is how I'm presenting. This is the new look on the take on this. This is my take on this. Almost like trying to cut down the other papers that have gone before. Yeah, the, the, no, this that's is that's right. That's the different culture, right? Like that's it, it says like, you know, for one to be respected as a Muni, a great thinker, you actually have to defeat someone's previous idea and establish your own new idea. Right. Mm. That's not the yoga culture. Yeah, right? the yoga culture is like I'm following. Right. It's not that you it's not that someone isn't making a new contribution, but it's new in the sense that it's like they're translating the same message in a new way so that it's appropriate for the time, the place, the circumstance. But it's still following. Right. It's, it's not trying to whip up a new idea. Hmm. It's, it's I'm going to follow it. I may present it in a new way, but I'm presenting the same thing in a new way. Like they say, old wine in a new bottle. Right. It's like you take something that's been around for a long time. And you present it in a new way according to the, the, the what is it, Kala Desha Patra, the time, the place, the circumstances. Okay. All right. Next one. We've had Ahimsa. Ahimsa. Had, which was now advanced. We've had Parmahamsya Charyaya, following in the footsteps of the great teachers. Okay. Again, the candidate for spiritual advancement must always remember the nectar of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How do you do that? You got to hear them. You got to hear them and you got to tell people about them. That helps you remember. You got to sing about them. <laughs> huh? That, well, there you go. So like you live peacefully, you fall in the footsteps, and then you bring your mind to these higher things. You engage them. You don't try to empty the mind, right? You don't right. try to like, I'm going to empty my mind of all thought and you can't do it <laughs> anyway. And it doesn't work. Who can do no. that? You bring your mind to something beautiful, something positive. Let's something face it. Spiritual, if you empty your mind of all thought, I don't want to hang out with you. You're you like be the most anyway. boring guy I've ever. You can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. You know, I broke the lawnmower. I can't fix it. Like I've emptied my mind of all thought. This is impractical. Let's get practical. Let's get practical, people. We want meditation. We like it. We're spiritual people. We get that. We want to do something spiritual through our life. I've got children. I've got a house. I've, what can I do? Empty your mind of all thought. Oh, great. Dad, yeah. what's for dinner tonight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dad, serious, we're starving. Uh, <laughs> that's the sound of a person without thought. It with empty his mind of all thought. Yeah. So, so you know, and when it says, uh. it says smrit, smritya, or, you know, the remembrance yeah. of mukunda, mukunda. acharita, <laughs> Sindhu, you know. very good that, sanskrit that, 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 thank you thank you and, and, but, it, but it's saying course, it's remembering mukunda's character and pastimes who's mukunda that's krishna who what does mukunda mean mara 
Boom. See what you got. Yep. Yeah. Well, it gives liberation. Boom. Gives she hit it. On it. So, 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 bring your mind to to the beautiful character and pastimes of that supreme being who's the root of all existence, and 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 by bringing your mind there, it grants liberation. Right. You become free of those shackles that we were talking about earlier. Now, these aren't just stories, and that in a in a sense, they're stories. Right. They 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 tell a story, but they're not ordinary. They are. They have their didactic purpose, which means there are deep lessons about life in them. Mm. But they also have they also have a deeper purpose as well, which is like it is actually practically connecting your mind to that supreme being with feelings of affection that become very transformational, very powerful in in, in letting go of all of the things of this world. Right. So you need to see the spiritual world to let go of the material world. You need to taste it. You need to have some idea of its flavor. And that's there in the pastimes of Krishna. You bring your mind to his pastimes and you begin to realize it gives you a whole nother way of looking at this world and it does something to the mind, it does something to the heart. So if you're gonna be nonviolent and you're gonna follow in the footsteps of these great acharyas, and then on top of that, you bring your mind to the right place, the most positive, powerful, transformative uh, meditations, now you're on a really effective path. And Sanat Kumar knows, right? He's like this little boy sage that he's, he's got it. You know, sometimes people get into these stories or they get into bhakti and think, oh, these stories are great. There's so many great, you know, deeper lessons here. Uh, there's so many uh, deeper teachings here. And they are, they're using the story to promote this deeper teaching of sense control and uh, focusing of the mind. And the answer is yes and no way. Not only yes, but yes, but no way, though. It's at the actual the stories aren't there to give you some secret hidden meaning. The stories are there because they're the pastimes of Sri Krishna, your very origin, the lover you're trying to re remember. It's actually yeah. innate within the soul that I have a relationship with God. I completely forgot. I'm just relating to the temporary things of this world. It's hey. not like we're reading these stories to find some deeper. What's the allegory of Krishna and the snake enters Agasura's mouth? There might be some allegory there, and some acharyas will give some allegory, but the story itself is the meditation. Right. We got it backwards. Yeah, well, you know, it, but, but it has both. It has but both. Let's not limit it. To, yeah, let's not limit it. Right? It is didactic. There are lessons to learn. There are there, there, there is meaning to it that is, um, that is informative, right? About but it's the not a stairway. It's not a, it's not a step to the higher principle yeah, to something it. beyond it right yeah that's not there you go the story it's, the, it's, itself. it's the means and the end as well right that's it all leads to those pastimes to that leela and that leela may seem very far into it you know what i was thinking yesterday what? like a lot of the times you know sometimes during puja we read the uh, translations of a lot of the songs we've always sang mm -hmm. and i remember reading them as a new devotee i was like you know, i don't quite get what this means you know what i, mean? I don't quite get <laughs> what did you lotus ask? feet Please help me become one of the maid servants of the gopis. I mean, you know, I just read these. We'd read these things like this is what we're supposed to read. So we read them. Um, but as I'm getting older, these things have so much more depth. They've grown roots in me mm. and I can really sing them with deeper joy, conviction, love. The things that say, like, what is Krishna entering the snake's mouth? What has that got to do with me when I was a brand new devotee? To me, these stories, are, they just come so much more to life at this vantage at this vantage point of my existence, oh, you're advancing, so, so much, huh? You are advancing. It's wonderful. Very, it's beautiful. I'm very, very deep. I'm very, very deep. <laughs> and just are. to sing, just even to sing Krishna's name, I could just sing it loudly and and, and with great joy. <laughs> that, there you go. There you go. That's uh, the pleasure. Do you see? That's the pleasure, right? That's, that's the pleasure. pleasure. What, what was the quote again? Let's go back to the nugget where uh, Sam smiles. He Same. told us. Sammy smiles. Yeah. Sammy smiles. said the ignorant man passes through Even the world. Even Sammy smiles voice. The ignorant man. <laughs> the ignorant man passes through the world dead <laughs> to all pleasures. See, those are the sentences. Sammy smiles. Sammy smiles. <laughs> but, that's, but that's it, right? In other words, that's the pleasure, right? You're, you've, you're, you're through your decades of bhakti practice, increasingly, you've opened yourself up and are experiencing more the real pleasure, not the pleasure of the senses, but the pleasure of just singing for Krishna's pleasure.
right? Yeah. The pleasure of pleasing Krishna through just song, right? That becomes you know, enough, right? It becomes enough. It becomes more than enough. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I tell you, India is such a special place. Yeah, tell me about it. Where people, you can just like, some of the fondest memories I have are traveling in those, you know, you ever travel in India in just one of those very crappy buses? Like who built this? A bunch of teenagers. Yes, I have. Like, who, like who, in, in, mel- in well, metal I think maintenance, shop. Maintenance is the problem. There's not so much the building; it was the maintenance of it. No, it's the building of the crappy <laughs> bus as well. It's from like 1935. It's like got no missing windows. But anyway, but That's on those bu- yeah. on those buses, yeah. there's just like a, a, a you know like eleven ladies traveling, and they're like sitting in the back of the bus, and they're just Cramped. singing. And they're singing yeah. these pastimes of Krishna and they'll just do it for hours. Like yeah. it's no big, they'll just sing for hours. And that's what they do to pass the time. And it's for, for someone like myself, when I get on a bus, you know, I'm just like, you know, sitting there nowadays, people know. are trying to hook up with Amtrak's Wi-Fi, and, oh man, I got knocked off. And they're just sitting there and they're <laughs> in their bitterness and their mind and trying to listen to music or whatever it is. But these guys are just singing and rejoicing over Krishna. It's like so natural for them. Mm-hmm. And to see, and, and even, and it's even despite all the discomfort of the, the uh, of the travel, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the nausea yeah. and the, the no, they've <laughs> transcended it. They've transcended, it and they're just singing songs, and it's communal. You know, nowadays you get on that uh, Amtrak, and you're sitting next to a person sometimes that you don't know, and it's like you don't even talk to them because they're in their own uh, w- the metaverse, and you're in your own metaverse. And, you know, she's watching movies and you're listening to music and you're you have, there's no communion no with humans any longer. Yeah, we'll fix this, we're going to fix it. I am going to fix it. <laughs> right. Get in the back of the train, just start <laughs> singing songs together. <laughs> what they say that they say that they say that they say that kids kids nowadays don't even have as much illicit sex as they used to because they're not so communal. That, yeah, we got to fix that. We, they're, you know, in the old in days, the people are bored, so they just let, have illicit sex. Now they just like listen, you know, everything exists online. It's ruined teenage online. sex. They hang out online. <laughs> they hang, they're texting everybody. They can just stay in their room. Right. But we have no relationships any longer. Right. You know, and, and, and these Indian old ladies are going to, right? They've transcended. What is it about these? You know, they, they've got like power. It's not like they're fragile or anything like, you know, they're not like fragile. Are you kidding? They're, they're tough. They're tough. They'll sit on the roof and do the same thing at the roof of the bus. And they've got energy. You know, it's like you, you, you go to Tirupati, you got to like climb 3,500 steps to get to the temple. And it's like there's like a woman that she, it's like you look like you're 94 years old and you're like passing me by. It's like I know. Where do they get that I energy? We were in Nepal trekking Mara with the group, and we were just like I remember just trekking, and there's some like old lady with a backpack on, and you know hunched, but she's on her way to Muktinath, and she, I was just like, okay, I don't want to ever hear you complain again about anything. <laughs> it's like well, you see this people. Oh, we're right. living in a How world. Of- Maybe you ought to apply that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're thinking about who you could apply to. <laughs> just look at who, you, who you could talk down to. Play Mara. <laughs> um, but it, it's the thing. We are just living in a world of complaining. Yeah. And we're yeah. sad because of it. Give it up. Oh, well, that's where this is going to go next, Rogan. Or maybe not next, but let's get, continue with this verse. Okay. This is going to go get there. Pass this first verse. It's a powerful verse. Yeah. It's a powerful verse. What's next? Always remembering the pastimes of Mukunda. Yeah. We must follow the regulative principles without material desire. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are they, what, the, what's yeah, what's the translation it? for material, uh, for regulative principles? Because sometimes you'll hear the uh, well, regulative yama. principles. It's, it says okay. yama and niyama. Yamir akamir niyamais. To follow we'll yama s- and niyama without material desire. Okay. Because sometimes Prabhupada would translate regulative principles to be shravanam kirtanam vishnismaranam. Sometimes he'll translate it to be uh you know no meat eating no intoxication etc you know, so basically you know, you, it is the yamas and the niyamas when you see a verse like this you see, i mean of course from bhagavad gita and other texts but you see this is this is the stuff that patanjali filtered into his own yoga sutras right we in this one verse we have ahimsa we have yama we have niyama you know it's 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 there 
so but but it's saying yama and niyama without material desire in other words and for the bhakti yogis material desire means it, it encompasses all of the typical material desire that someone might have but someone might practice these things for material gain right mm -hmm. that's the vedic conception from the four vedas um but but here's saying you do it without any material desire right you do it for for no purpose but divine love that's why mm -hmm. we're doing okay so yama and niyama without material desire and then and now this then, is important one um one should not blaspheme others a candidate for spiritual advancement must not blaspheme others Aninda, that's a tough one aninda yeah you know ninda, like there's that term sadhu ninda criticizing sadhu. Uh, yeah. a sadhu a good person right it's very very difficult to do it seems like it's a sense control all these things are hard to do not blaspheming others this is the kerplunk the straw you pull out in kerplunk where all the marbles come down mm. going back to our kerplunk analogy for yes. those who grew up in america in the 70s right this blows it all this wrecks everything you've done all the kirtans you've went to all the japa you've chanted all the silent meditation i'm sitting for an hour today kerplunk it's over i went to you know kirtans all summer kerplunk it's over i chanted 64 rounds kerplunk it's over <laughs> all, it doesn't matter what you've done good once you start blaspheming people you're wrecking your entire spiritual life it's it, and it's it's a big problem and try and if we grew and if we grow up in a culture where it's like it's it's not only what we do it's like a pastime is to is is to critique people you know uh, try to figure out uh this is the way you should be doing and always giving people our great instructions we live in that correcting blaming critiquing relishing someone's shortcom relishing their shortcomings or losses hmm. it's one thing to say oh yeah because stu is going through a hard time it's another thing oh poor Kasubi, he's really going through it right now yeah he but in, in the back of my mind I'm like <laughs> yeah, no, I'm in the back of my mind, I'm sort of like, yeah, it's about time. Yeah, <laughs> it's going down, <laughs> it's going down. You got, you got to be really careful with that. Why? Because because every spirit soul, even the ones you don't like, is very dear to Krishna. Mm. Hmm? Thank you. Because God is in everyone's heart. Very important. We're getting all in this verse. There's still a couple more elements. So that was Anindaya. Anindaya, don't blast. Free me, from others. Ninda, free from. See if you can Chris do 24 Ayer. hours, people. This is our test. Can I go 24 hours without blaspheming anybody? 20, Let's check back Aninda, in tomorrow. The, one hour, Aninda hour. What? Do it one. We'll call it the Aninda hour. Do the oh, Aninda. An hour without criticizing. Yeah. Oh, I like that Aninda hour. Aninda day. 24 hours. Aninda day. Aninda day. The Aninda day. Aninda day. Okay. <laughs> Not that catchy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 24 hours of no blasphemy. Okay, let's keep continuing because we're almost out of time here. Gotta okay. Be this one first. A devotee should lead a very simple life, right? There Not complicated. Go. Now, yeah. someone could say, well, what about Maharaj Yudhisthira, Maharaj Bharat, right? Uh, Maharaj it, well, Mahugana, even right? Even though they had this kind of huge responsibility, they were just waiting for the day they could leave it all behind, <laughs> right? They were. All these kings, Bharat, Maharaj, yeah, Yudhisthira. They, they, yeah, but they weren't simple. They didn't live simple lives. They, they had a responsibility to externally. It wasn't simple. They had an internal simplicity, right? They might not have had it externally, but they definitely had it internally. Yeah. And, and yeah. externally, they're just waiting for that day where they could let it go. Okay. okay. And then a devotee should lead a very simple life and not be disturbed by the duality of opposing elements. And Tvandva, Tatikshaya, tolerating tolerating the, 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 uh, the opposing elements it's hot one moment then it's cold we're just going to get all caught up in that there's talk gain, about it all day and huh? there's loss there's gain there's loss so we're going to just think about it all day complain about it all day there's or even love get excited and there's about. heartbreak love and heartbreak yeah dvandva. you know you know that you know that term from the bhagavad gita dvandva, where that comes up dvandva mitena oh yeah dvandva mohena dvandva mohena bharata what is yeah. that? That's some oh, is that sign the famous of, one? That's 727. Oh, sign of heart. Oh, conqueror of the foe. All living entities are born into delusion. 
bewildered by dualities arisen from desire and hate. When we say hate there, we mean, in other words, attraction and repulsion, right? Yeah. I'm attracted and, to this. I'm repulsed by this. I'm attracted to this. I'm repulsed by that. And now we're, here it's saying and we're getting thrown back and forth because of it. That's that's why we're stuck in this world, because our mind has been programmed almost. It's kind of like random programming, because like one person's mind is programmed to be attracted to this and think that that's going to make them happy. And another person's mind may be programmed with repulsion for the same object. It's not that our happiness or unhappiness lies in the object. It's just the way that our mind is programmed to respond to it. So the yogis realize I'm not going to be a slave to my mind anymore. I'm not going to be just like we we're talking earlier. I'm not going to be a slave to I'm, I'm going to take control. I'm not going to be a slave to my senses. I'm not going to be a slave to my mind. I'm going to tolerate my mind may be programmed to say, oh, this sucks, right? This circumstance is just the worst. My mind may be programmed to respond that way. I'm going to bypass that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to and I'm going to tolerate it. Right. So here it says Dvandva Titikshaya, tolerating these um dualities right and, and as i begin to tolerate them i'm going to change the programming in my mind my mind's going to learn to become indifferent to whether it's hot or cold right then i can actually experience the nature of the self underneath the, the happiness of the self underneath that's yoga we tolerate the mind but from scranton tolerate the world dwanva mohena <laughs> delusion arising from desire and hate hey brunaji's in the hospital what happened? I'll say prayers to Brunaji right now. Oh. Brunaji, we love you. We miss you. I love Brunaji. She's a great soul. Very sweet soul. Okay. Well, we got to wind this up. I could have gone with this for a while. Why don't, why don't we read the whole verse one more time? Just okay. So from the get go, from the beginning yeah. here, 24. Hold, start it again because you're, you're, just, you're uh, lagging on us. I'm lagging? Yeah. The go candidate ahead. for spiritual advancement must be nonviolent, must follow in the footsteps of the great Acharyas, the great masters. Must always remember the nectar of the pastimes of the personality of Godhead, Mukunda. Must follow the regular principles, the yamas and niyamas, without material desire. And while following the regular principles, not blaspheme others. A devotee should lead a very simple life and not be disturbed by the duality of opposing elements. He should learn to tolerate them. There's mysteries of the universe nice. right there. All right, that's it. Marrow. Can you give us, did you, what were you writing on that phone in there? What no, did I, you? I was just texting with Bobby Marshall. <laughs> yeah, did anybody see Bobby feeding <laughs> the right. chipmunks today? I put it on, I put it on, um, what's that called? You, you can't hear you, Roganath. You got to get you spot, some. I spotlighted Bobby Marchand because in her little window box on Zoom, right, she was feeding, she's feeding a squirrel just like a Lord Rom would. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Anyway, and I took some notes. I got some good takeaways. Okay, give me too. some takeaways. Want to be happy? Identify as the soul. A boom! We came right out, of the, a little bit right out of the gates Mary. with that one. Get off the mental platform. T-shirt. Sense gratification. That's, that's a good mens. Yeah, get off the mental platform. I I could buy that a T-shirt right I'd there. Buy, that. good... buy it. I'd wear it. Get off the mental platform. Sense Same gratification. Smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Sense gratification could be a highway to hell. That's right. Is this highway to hell? I think Mayor should do the rest of them in, in Sammy Smiles' voice. <laughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> Seek pleasure from serving others. Okay. Boring, but true. <laughs> I mean, I'm boring. Can get any bagels. No, I mean, it's I'm not boring. boring. It's a boring uh, T-shirt. It doesn't have to be. All right. Minimize the violence. That's a T-shirt. Minimize it. It, although it's not going to be enough for, for, for most people that that shirt would just sound like kind of shouldn't we stop the violence? <laughs> no, <laughs> just minimize it. Minimize it. A little bit less MMA, violence. But I don't know if my MMA friends would like that shirt. Maintain some of the violence, but just not too much of it. <laughs> Prioritize kindness and simplicity. There you go. Yeah. Be practical. Remember Krishna's pastimes. Mm hmm. Uh, Tolerate the duality. Tolerate the duality. They were tolerate the dual. Tolerate the duality. Blaspheming others will kerplunk your spiritual life. Kerplunk. Right. Euros don't know that one. The euros don't know. Can't Maybe they do. It sounds German to me. Kerplunk. Some, someone's got a pat. Someone. We don't have a message board, do we? We got to need a picture of kerplunk. I think it's probably a German word. Anybody from Germany there? Uh, we get they got they got it in Scotland. They got it in England. They got Kerplunk over there. They don't have it in Germany. Where is where is uh, 
Tina Sounds Shai. totally Tina Shai. And Narayani. Did you grow up with Kerplunk? No. Nope. has got no, no Kerplunk. You missed out, and we stole your word. Is is Kerplunk a German word, Narayani? <laughs> I don't think it is probably, no. but it sounds it sounds, sounds like, very yeah. German. It sounds like Dillenkopf. <laughs> Kerplunk. <laughs> sounds like something uh, An angry uh, Schultz, Schultz would say. <laughs> 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 right. I lost me again. You lost them. All right. And the last Anything one, else? make illicit sex great again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that we want to go with horrible. that. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> make illicit sex great. Oh, Krishna, who came up with that one? <laughs> AJ Sullivan, Matt God, and one of those guys. That is breaking the principles. They're trying to get me off the... You are so funny, Kostuba, because no one's even getting Kostuba, but he's making the Stalag 13 Hogan's Heroes je- references. The only people nothing. that get it is... Nothing. Yeah, the only people that get it is Jeffrey Eisenberg and, and me and, and, and maybe uh, Greg DeGesu and Henry. And AJ Sullivan's got it. <laughs> Oh, Messig, yes. These are our people. Steve Omari gets it. All the Hogan Heroes jokes. Ugh. So we got a big oh, weekend, Rogo. the nectar Rogu. that we absorbed ourselves in. 